Recently on this channel, I reviewed the standard and deluxe states of Conversation Tree Press's first publication, Peter Patton. Tony Gear, who's the proprietor of Conversation Tree Press, has also sent me to review this copy of the lettered state, which is the top end state of that edition. Before we get to the book itself, upon opening the shipping package, we're confronted with a nice letterpress printed broadside. It's printed on this really heavy duty, I think it's 300 GSM cotton paper. It feels super luxurious. And then letterpress printed here on the front, we have this line illustration by Charles Vess and a textual excerpt from the book, including this nice ornate drop cap. Now turning to the book itself, we've seen an upgrade here on the case. So instead of the slip cases of the standard and deluxe state, we now have a very substantial Solander box and it's covered in this brown Italian linen cloth. As one might expect, the case, which was made by Ludlow Bookbinders, is very well put together. It feels nice and sturdy. And the only major embellishment is on the spine of the case, we have a leather label, which has been blocked in gilt with the title, the name of the author and illustrator, and an illustration of Peter and Wendy by a crescent moon. Now let's open out that Solander box. Of course, Solander boxes provide slightly better protection for the book than do slipcases, but the thing I really enjoy about them is that opening them always makes the experience feel that little bit special. Here on the inside of the spine of the case, we have this red marbled paper by Freya Scott. The whole thing is metallic. It catches the light quite nicely and then it's flecked with gold, which also makes it look a little bit special. Inside the box, we have these two compartments. First of all, here on the Verso side, we have this frame which is covered in a suede-like material, so it's nice and soft and held inside of there by these two brass clasps is a linen covered folio, which is blocked on the cover with a guide to Kensington Gardens and Neverland. So we can open out the clasps. We have here a gold ribbon pull, which allows us safely to lift out that folio. And we'll take a look at the contents of this in just a moment. Over here on the recto side, beneath the bubble wrap, we get our first glimpse of the book itself. Again, it's nestled in this frame covered in a suede-like material. And again, we have this ribbon pull to help us remove the book. The ribbon pull this time is nice and broad. It's about an inch or two and a half centimeters wide. And there's the book itself. But of course, we'll take a close look at that in just a moment. Beneath the book, we can pull again on our ribbon pull. And we have another box covered again in that brown linen cloth. And this is blocked on the cover with an original plate from the letterpress printing of Peter Pan. So again, something for us to look at in just a moment's time. Of course, the main attraction here is the book itself. We have what is called a bradle style binding, which means the book is quarter bound and then the spines material tucks underneath the boards rather than wrapping around onto the boards. And the boards are covered in this very nice crimson leather it feels like a high quality leather. It has a nice even but still visible grain and it feels soft and pliable, but nevertheless robust. Altogether, one can feel this has been covered with a good material. And then that front board has been blocked in gilt with the title and this line illustration by Charles Vess. In fact, it's the same design that was blocked onto the cover of the deluxe state, but I think this gilt blocking looks especially handsome against its crimson ground. The spine too has been blocked in gilt. So we have Peter Pan running vertically in nice large characters. And this time that blocking has been overlaid with blind stamped swash ligatures, a unique one over each character. And then at the bottom, we have also blind stamped the conversation tree press mark. The top edge of the text block has been gilded and it seems like a very nice job has been done of that. And we have a gold ribbon marker and hand sewn red and gold end buttons. The bottom and four edges of the text block have been left untrimmed. So we have a natural decal here. And just like the other two states, the binding work has been done by Ludlow Bookbinders. And again, I think they've done a very nice job. It feels like another well-made book. 
Now opening the book, we first encounter end papers with this marbled paper by Freya Scott. And then we come to what was advertised on the Conversation Tree website as a remark by the illustrator Charles Vess. I was expecting some sort of small doodle almost. What instead we get is a bound in full page original pencil drawing initialed by Vess. And so it's really nice to have essentially an original piece of artwork bound into each edition. The substantive contents of this state are identical to the standard and deluxe state. So we have the same text, the same set of illustrations. Just like those states, the text and line illustrations have been printed letterpress by Nomad Letterpress. But one thing that has changed here is that the paper has seen another upgrade because now we have paper from the Czech Losin mill, which is a little bit legendary in fine press collecting circles. This is a very nice paper with a very nice coarse tactile texture to it. It reminds me of all of those great papers used by the top private presses in the first half of the 20th century and it makes leafing through the book a delightful tactile experience. And given that the paper has that slightly less refined coarse tactile sensation to it, I think it's nice also to have these deckled edges that add to the sense that this is an artisanal paper. This paper, by the way, was uniquely made for the letter state of the book and it bears a watermark, including a drawing by Charles Vess, so that this is uniquely tied to this particular state. The other substantive change in the internal contents of the lettered state is that the illustrations have been included in the same fashion as the deluxe state, that is to say trimmed to size and then mounted on these brown laid paper sheets that are bound in. But the paper on which the illustrations has been printed has again seen an upgrade. This is a Somerset paper and it has a slightly coarse texture. It reminds me of cold pressed watercolor paper. So it feels more tactile and it has a matte finish. Now, normally if we're printing color illustrations on a matte stock, one worry is that they lose vibrancy but here the images have been printed by a Gickley process. It's the same process that's used to produce high-end fine art prints. And so they retain all of their vibrance despite the fact that they're on this nice matte paper. And in fact, at first glance, many of them have the appearance of being original watercolor paintings. So I thought that was another nice upgrade that one gets in this lettered state of the book. And then we arrive at the book's colophon page. It has been hand lettered and signed by the printers. So this is Patrick and Ellen from Nomad Letterpress, the illustrator Charles Vess. And I presume this is the signature of the binder from Ludlow. So that's the internals of the lettered state of Peter Pan. Now let's take a look at those other things that we had inside of the Solander box. So firstly, we have this folio. It says a guide to Kensington Gardens and Neverland. It's covered in the same linen cloth as the Solander box. And when we open it out, we have these two red pockets inside of each of which is a bifold sheet printed with one of Charles Vesser's hand-drawn maps. So this is the map of um, Kensington Gardens. And over here on the recto side, we have the map of Neverland. So these are the same maps that were bound in in the deluxe state and used as end papers in the standard state. Now they're printed on this relatively thick, feels like a cardstock almost, um, and included in this separate folio. One advantage of that, of course, is that it makes the maps easier to consult while also reading the book. Secondly, we have this box. 
It says an original plate from the letterpress printing of Peter Pan. This time it's a two-part box, so we can lift the lid off here. And inside we find a box that is lined again in that suede-like material. And here we have an original magnesium plate that was used in the printing of the book. This in fact is the plate that was used to print that title page we saw a few moments ago. So that I think is not only a nice keepsake, but I find it personally quite cool to think that out there there are 725 copies of this edition and all of them have seen the kiss of this particular piece of metal in front of us right here. So a nice little keepsake from the production of this edition. So that is the lettered state of Peter Pan from Conversation Tree Press. The list price of this edition was 2,695 American dollars. So it comes at quite significant expense. But the good news is that this demonstrates that they know how to put together a top end edition that is capable of commanding those types of prices. A few highlights for me were the nicely constructed Solander box. The materials used in the binding really felt very luxurious. The paper is delightful. I thought the reproduction of the illustrations was very well done. And I thought the inclusion of this magnesium plate that we saw was a nice little memento from the printing of the edition. So overall, I think we can confidently say that Conversation Tree has arrived on the fine press scene and they've demonstrated an ability to produce very nice but affordable fine press editions, as well as books that deserve their place at this higher end of the market.